Good morning. What are we doing today? Today is fence painting or staining day. I'm going to go over painting versus staining. I'll talk to you about uh, working with this fence, moisture levels, a few different things. So hold on. Man, can you believe it is November 1st? Look at that. That grass looks so good. But today we're going to be painting or staining that picket fence. One of the things I did is I went over and talked to the neighbors and let them know that I'm going to be spraying stain today uh, and warn them. And if I needed a tarp, I'd let them borrow a tarp for their van. But the next thing you probably need is I always recommend you have one of these, which is a moisture level reader for wood. It has little probes on the end. It's pretty simple. We were supposed to have this done last week and it rained for like seven hours straight. So the fence was way too wet. What's interesting about the moisture meter is if you go out early morning, you're obviously gonna have dew on the fence. So it's gonna read kind of high and I'll take you out there now. But yesterday afternoon I went out there, the sunny side was at like 4% uh, moisture content. The back was about 8%. 15% is the level where you're supposed to be below. So 15% if you plan to paint or stain. So if I come over here, it's probably gonna show me high because of the morning humidity, but it really isn't. It's gonna show me high because of the dew. So one of the first things I learned about these is that the morning readings where you have a lot of dew on your fence will actually skew the reading from what the true moisture level content of your wood is. So you need to do it during the daytime after project. So if you remember, uh, I won't go in depth on this, but for anyone that watches my channel, uh, the overseed a few days ago we did with perennial rye back here. Look at that. Doesn't that look great? So the fescue that we put out here, we believe that the zoysia was killing off a lot of that fescue. Well, the perennial rye, all of it's germinating. Look at that, that's gonna be gorgeous in a couple of weeks. So, I'm actually gonna put out, I've been talking about green shocker, and that's what I've been putting back here. I've been putting green shocker on this newly seeded, <clears throat> every week a light coat. Well, now I'm gonna switch over to slow release because this is a cold season grass. This is a perennial rye that'll last all the way through the winter. So now I can switch over to a long-term fertilizer. Kind of confusing, huh? But on our warm season out front, no long term, I'm just putting green chalk. So let's take a quick minute and let's talk about the difference between a solid stain and a paint. Okay, when it comes to stains, you have transparent, semi-transparent, and solid. And basically, it's the, it's the level of the colors. It's the level of the pigments, the level of the solids that you're increasing each time you go by. As a matter of fact, when you're looking at stains, if you look at a transparent stain, it'll generally have a three-year warranty. A semi-transparent will have a five-year warranty. And a solid will have like a 10-year warranty. And that's basically the UV protection that you're getting from the stains. So it's actually the same stain a lot of the time that you're getting. It's just the warranty on that stain increases with the more pigment that's inside of it. Make sense? A paint... When you apply a paint, it's actually like taking a piece of paper and putting it on top of it, and it's sort of glued to the wood back here. When you take a stain, the stain actually absorbs into the wood. Got it? So it's kind of a hybrid between the two. A solid color stain will absorb into the wood, but it still has a lot of solid pigments that sit on the top. So you get the benefits of both a stain and a paint and crows. <laughs> So understand if you have bare wood, that's the time where I would personally work, strongly recommend that you go with a solid stain because you can always paint over a solid stain. It almost acts like its own primer, as a matter of fact. So if you're going to do a white fence, a white picket fence, or even a house that's solid wood, it's not a bad idea to start the process with a solid color stain. It will fade over time where paint will sort of crack and fade, will crack and chip, and, but the stain will not do that. The stain bonds much better to the wood. So 
you can go ahead and put a solid stain on a fence, a deck, a house. You can use solid stain. And then if you want to go back a couple years later, you can go back and apply another coat of stain or you can actually switch over to a paint. Got it? So that's why on this fence, we're actually going to the picket fence. We're actually going to a solid stain. It's actually going to seal it. It's going to absorb into it better. It's going to last longer. It's not going to paint and chip off. That's why we're using it. Okay, so let's talk about the stain that we're using. This is bare and this is a solid stain. So it's a solid color house and fence wood stain. This is one of those hybrid stains that's an oil slash latex. It cleans up with soap and water, but it actually has oil molecules inside of it. So as it penetrates, it releases those oils for penetration. We will be doing one standard coat and then Kurt goes back and does just a light coat after that just in case you have any areas that really absorb it and it looks too woody. So that's how he does it and I'm fine with that. Go by, do a standard coat on it, not too heavy, and then go back after that's done and put another light coat on top of it. So just to give you guys an example of moisture content, you bought this wood this morning, right? Yeah. I'm gonna show you, this is the wood that Kurt bought this morning. And I'm going to show you the content of it, of this pressure treated. It's actually kind of funny, so... forty, 45.4, 45% moisture. 24, and that's what you'll get. And this stuff, you know, this wood, that fence has been out there for what, two weeks now? About through almost three weeks now, and it's down with the sunlight. It's down to five to ten, five to twelve percent. It's perfect. Too much more solid than that without putting it in the ground. Yeah, I agree. So basically, what he's doing here, so you can see this, is he's built this whole thing out, left this extended, and then he'll come back and he'll cut this off. But all we're doing is we're just tying into the two posts here and just making a screen. This isn't a fence. This is just a screen, and it's sitting right on top of the gravel. So this is what this is what's known as board on board. I call it board on board. People call it something else, but basically what we're doing is we're putting a baseboard and a baseboard and then a board on top of that. And the reason why I'm doing it that way is to cut down on some of this pump noise as well too, but I'm so glad I went to five feet instead of four feet. So much better. So it's five o'clock and it's been a long day. <laughs> I haven't gotten a lot of this video. The fence is probably about 85% done. Everything's been sprayed and they'll come back on Thursday and what they'll do is they'll touch up with a brush. So let me show you what it looks like right now. So there is the finished fence. That looks nice. Man, that grass sure looks green <laughs> with a white picket fence. That looks great. So let me give you a tip on staining. <laughs> Don't rush it like today. Today it's rain, constant rain all day long. You're gonna have to let that fence, if you've got a raw fence, you're gonna have to give it a good two or three days, even though it's dry after a rain, to come back and actually apply certain stains. 
The other thing is, is read your paint can, read your stain can, understand what type of stain you're putting on. Some of these new hybrid stains, you can actually go out, like the stain we used on this fence, you can go right, right after a rain, it doesn't have to be dry because it's a special proprietary blend that actually can be applied to higher moisture contents. Now the stain we're using today, no, they wanted you to have a low moisture content. They wanted you to be below 15%. So that bare stain, they want you to have a dry wood. The stain that we use over here, which was, uh, I forget the name of it, but you can actually apply it right after a rain. The, the weather doesn't bother it, so read your stain. Um, again, Kurt's gonna come back and he's gonna, with a brush, they're gonna come back and with a brush and a can, they're actually gonna come back and retouch that whole fence in any of the spots that either they missed or they got heavily absorbed, they'll actually come back and they'll do touch up with the paint. You can do a second coat right after it dries if you want to as well too. So uh, we're back to lawns here in a minute. We'll be talking about winter lawns and what we're doing this winter, a couple other projects, some pressure washing, a bunch of different stuff. So hit subscribe and uh, I'll talk to you later. Die.